you know John Malone, you're after having a good laugh. Um, <laughs> yeah, correct. Anyway, we, we're going to talk about design of cities and buildings, okay, in the, in the event of a pandemic. Um, if you go back to 100 years ago, uh, probably even more, um, cities, they started de developing a sewage system and water uh, systems because of viruses and bacteria and it caused pandemics, okay. Um, and so, as a result, we have a fairly average sewage system in most countries of the world and a water uh, treatment facilities and that, you know, and things have improved and there's been less um, cholera and God knows what other illnesses. Um, so what would you do to d redesign a city? Well, I think number one, uh, in Ireland we're blessed because we have uh, uh, in 300, in, in a year, uh, it's, it's estimated that we have two thirds of the year, uh, we have uh, clouds and <coughs> plenty of rain, so you'd be drowned uh, going out. So uh, so we have no shortage of water compared to other countries that they have to use seawater to, to sort of destalinate de uh, uh, de the salt uh, so, so as to have water. Uh, Spain is one, even the place that I lived in for a few years uh, near Alicante had um, this question of... Um, uh, um, units fast expense to uh, use sea water and uh, um, so as it can become into fresh water mm -hmm. and to have it in probably in in in, in uh, these Arab countries like uh, in in Dubai and all these places. Now we're fortunate that we ha we have plenty of water, uh, but what we haven't got. Uh, is is and we have a an improved sewage system to compare, compared to what it was in olden times, uh, but there's no question or doubt about it. It leaves a bit to be desired even at the present time. That was, uh, I, th I think like every home should have its own treatment plant. Uh, when I say plant, now something the size of a fridge freezer in the ground that treats the sewage before it goes into the next stage. I think that'd be. So well, I, I'm fortunate. You're looking at John Malone here, Christian Jobs Action Party. He's he he's ahead of the posse here. He has his own water, in other words, uh, well water, yes. and uh, my own sewage system, which is a septic tank. Well, so there's nothing going in anywhere from John Malone. He's the contribute. He he is uh, what's the word? Uh, Saintly John. Well, well, <laughs> very, very good for the for for the environment. Nothing is going into the into into the sea by way of sewage. Very good, very good. Unlike the county councils. Yes, exactly. So, for have example, you anybody idea? Have you any councils? Do you know of any councils where sewage is going into the sea, untreated? Yeah, un untreated Hoth would be one place. Well, no, that's in County Dublin. Cork. Thousands and wheel, wheel, the equivalent of uh, I don't know how many thousand wheelie bins goes into Cork Harbour every every week. Untreated. That should never be. Yeah, but it, it's all over. Because and it shouldn't be in Hoth either. Because there was a big fishing. Uh, I grew up there. And there was a big fishing business, and I never heard of that. Funny enough, and there was a beach there called Claremont Beach, mm -hmm. which I swam in when I was young, and which a lot of people come out from Dublin to swim in. Mm -hmm. along with going to Port Marek, wherever, wherever, wherever else they went. But a lot of them come to Holt. That beach would be packed in the summer. And uh, so um, you wouldn't want to be thinking about that. Now, there wouldn't have been as many houses at that time. And now, of course, there's a lot of houses. And I think the increase in, in housing, even in, 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 in suburban areas that used to be semi-rural, Castle Knock, for example, uh, is... Chuck a black with houses uh, compared to uh, when I used to uh, um, call to businesses uh, in, the, in the in the food trade mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, it was it catching up was very easy to get through and all the rest of us, uh, but now it's changed beyond our recognition. So that's obviously an amount of sewage that would would have never been catered for, I think, mm -hmm. uh, by the planners. Uh, and now, is sewage from Dublin? being treated or is some of it going into to the sea as in Holt? Oh yeah, look mo most of most of the sewage in Dublin has been treated properly, okay? But but there are a few places Well if they can do the that with the amount of houses then it can be done in other areas in in other areas. Okay, that wouldn't have that sort of a population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be well easy to um, be able to do it. I just want to move on to the, the design of the buildings itself, okay? Um, so if you look at AIB, I was in AIB the other day and I walked in and when you walk into AIB, they have a security system. So you walk into the door, there's a big glass door, 
and then you walk in and then five more walk in behind you and then you're all in a five foot by five square the door behind you closes and you can't open the door in front of you until the one behind you closes there's no air conditioning in that little five by five space which is about 10 foot high um there's a little bottleneck because you'd have hundreds of people going in and out of the bank okay um all the time so what i'm trying to say is we design our buildings for um for people that are disabled for wheelchair access businesses spend millions on us but we never think of pandemics you know we never design for for pandemics for example no door in a public space where thousands of people go through should have a handle on it it should be automatic that should be that's standard right price. yeah well they had that i think for security because banks where there was a lot of uh, uh robbers and uh, going in and robbing banks because i happened to be in one myself one time right. in bray and uh at half one on a friday and i'd gone in to make a lodgement mm -hmm. and i was going out uh, there was a a pub across the way, road from the bank it was bank of Ireland where i used to have my lunch which was a toasted sandwich and a and a pot of tea with a colleague and uh, <coughs> we used to finish off with a, a little packet of six biscuits uh, i used to call it the yellow pack but it wasn't yellow pack it was cadbury's snacks or something and that was they used to look forward to that so i was in the bank at half one and uh somebody there was two cashiers one disappeared after 10 and one so there was only one and then there was one at that and i thought maybe they were going to give their life story because it was happened from one late to another myself in vexation and then there was a queue behind me so um uh, but as I was attended to and was uh, going fairly smartly out the bank, suddenly there were three rappers coming with guns. Mm -hmm. So we had to hit the deck. I know, but I just think... Look, in now, all I'm saying is that that was then. No, I'm just giving that little story, uh, ju just by way of anecdotes. Uh, but uh, now, in some banks that I've just heard lately, is that they're only letting in a few people at a time. I know they are, but the thing about it is, are the two security doors open? I don't know what way. No, no, I don't think they're too secure. So are they? Are they still? Are they still? Or do you don't think they have them? Is it? Uh, no, no. Well, no, uh, they, they, I don't think so. But um, well, whether they do or whether they don't, they're only allowing that in. And I think only in one particular section they can't come in two different doors, which sometimes they can. Okay, so they're um, taking measures. Uh, they're taking measures. But you still, well. everybody. And you'll find every bank they will be taking measures. Everybody is still putting their hand on the handle of the door for the bank. That's the problem. This is why the banks are trying to get people to go via the internet. Yeah, yeah. well, that's for profit reasons, I'd say. <laughs> oh, it is, yeah, and for to get rid of staff and yeah, of share course. this shareholder nonsense. It's employees that are that put put banks on the that that uh, deserve to be looked after, not uh, shareholders to the same extent. Now, if you look at public toilets. Okay, people use public toilets, and each toilet has a lock on it. And of course, you have to touch that lock with your hand, and they also you have to press with your hand to flush the toilet. Okay, there is another bottleneck. Okay, for viruses. Okay, because we don't, we know, we're told by the virology experts. John Malone's going to lop his head off in a second. <laughs> we're told by the virology experts, right? Toilet humor. <laughs> um, that all this is, all these viruses are transferred by touch, right? So, look at your average shopping center. Look at the escalator. Okay. So when you hop on the escalator to go up, because you sometimes don't to, you hold the handle. You hold the handle, the moving handle. Aye. And there, thousands of people do that every day of the week, right? There is a little bottleneck there. Okay. So there's all these things we need where we can redesign our buildings. Um, and while we were talking about the security thing, there we were talking about for the banks, um, in in taxis. In London, you often see this glass thing. Oh yes, all the black taxis have separating the, yeah. the give for the safety of the driver, yeah. um, and then the passenger is, is at the back. Correct. He's able to talk into a little thing, and you hear it down at the back. Yeah. Uh, so this actually would, if you if you were to make a more advanced one, you could probably have it so that in a pandemic situation, you can keep people moving in taxis without them getting infected. Yeah. The, week, the, the taxis week. in Britain, uh, they should have been implemented in other jurisdictions because it was a great system. The driver was on his own. It wasn't sort of like a saloon as such. Uh, there was uh, it was quite it was in, and then uh, I think up to six people could be in the back of the taxi, uh, three in the back seat and then three facing them. But now probably they wouldn't have that many. 
uh, but the business of the glass from the driver, it was a security point of view that he couldn't be robbed. Okay. That would be a factor, but there would have been a health factor as well because this is in London where uh, there's such a variety of people come from all over the place and that you could pick up other sort of things at okay. the time okay. rather than these uh, viruses now that's prevalent. Now, if you, we were talking there um, about practical measures a long time ago about the environment, right? And we were talking about the fridges and supermarkets should ideally have doors on them, right? But of course, in a pandemic situation, that doesn't work out very well because everybody puts their hands, thousands of people every day put their hands on the fridge door inside the middle, they open it, and there's another weak point, okay? Another weak point, of course, in little as well as just, just to mention it, is, um, do you know the little, you know the dividers when you go to the counter? Yes. And you have the conveyor belt for your shopping. And yeah. Then somebody will hand you a divider. That's right. And you put it down, Okay. There is a little weak point there, and thousands of people put their hands on those every day. When you see, Oliver, the the question of these uh, items that we were just outlined there, uh, to try and deal with a virus, uh, along with trying to design things in such a way as minimising uh, that, it'd be so costly and so sort of leading to some kind of inefficiency in the operation of these uh, things and that you could nearly forget about it and the only solution that people can adopt is prudence in other words uh, wear gloves uh, light gloves gloves that doesn't mean to say that you have to take them off to do something as I saw there's, there's some kind of gloves that you can do your army stuff special gloves so therefore if you have that you're less likely to uh, leave at them I think that's number one wearing, wearing gloves would would deal with that a business, but I think myself, uh, like escalators and that, that's for convenience for you to go up and down. Uh, but if you've I've got a glow, if you've got gloves on you, well then even if you do hold the, hold the handle, you're not going to get some. I'm I'm not suggesting take away the escalator. What I am suggesting is to sanitize it every. Maybe oh yes, minutes. yes. Well, exactly. San sanitize it. Uh, would would would. Or would. or let. This is a brilliant idea. I just thought of it just now. I've had one of those light bulb ideas, John Long. What they could have, okay, is an automatic dispenser in the escalator under the ground. You know the way it goes under the ground, yeah. So that it's automatically disinfected. Maybe it's maybe they maybe they already exist. I don't know, but that's that's a nice little idea. Well, well, uh, it is, and uh, things like that, I suppose, uh, just to sort of uh, take steps with the system that they have to alleviate the, the situation but I think certainly if I was a glove manufacturer I'd certainly be working over time to produce the kind of gloves that would fit in like as if you'd still have to use your fingers and all the rest of it mm -hmm. and that's easy like what I saw with the, the, the motorway what the lady had in the cashier because I had to stop and, and, and produce money I didn't have that I could put it into the, to the box I had uh, to give a note and uh, she give me the change and she was wearing these little these gloves that was very easy to be able to hand money I mean if you've got thick gloves you can't be doing that mm -hmm. uh, so um, I, I must look for a pair of gloves now uh, that will fit, fill the bill but I think that's that would be the best way to, to, to deal with things and then to uh, for people that didn't have gloves or didn't mm, manage to get some uh, that, that, that there would be sanitised these things uh, that, that that people uh, use. And the business of automatic doors uh, can pose a security problem. Now, a lot of the supermarkets have them, mm -hmm. and even smaller stores have them. And uh, even when you're passing on the street, the bloody door opens and you're not going in at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, these are, these are, are, are simple things. Uh, but I think the main thing is, I suppose, if you are going out and, you're, and, and out and about, well then, if you're going to be handling things, have these light gloves. I wonder, it'd be very good if we can find out, and hopefully we will find out, and do a, a video about it, as to know where you can get those type of gloves that I saw that lady wearing, mm -hmm. and the thing, and I, I think other people, uh, light gloves, I'm going to have a, a look to see if I can see them. Anyway. I bought, a, a, I'll show them to you, I, I bought um, some, some of those gloves you're talking about. Oh, did you? I bought a packet of them, about 50 of them, in Tesco's. They were very cheap. They were very oh, white. well done. I'm going to have a look at those. I'll give you a few of them, yeah. yeah. Oh, do, do, because uh, that'll be very handy. Uh, I mean, I have gloves, but they're 
uh, leather gloves, uh, and, and then I have ordinary gloves, and I couldn't find my leather gloves there this morning, so I had the other gloves. So that kind, uh, of, con- that kind of concludes our, our corona pandemic virus videos. Are you pandemic on the brain? I, I do, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, suffice to say, it's a virus. It's a virus. Uh, you know, uh, they're, 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 they're throwing this pandemic around the place like snuff in a week. Oh. And John Malone, uh, kind of, it's like... Uh, <laughs> Dr. Doctor John. <laughs> I, I prefer the word virus because viruses is, is, can be spread. Uh, now, um, so uh, the, the, I think the experts are still uh, scratching their head and trying to see what kind of a solution that they can come up with that will be effective and will not need all this isolation. Okay. Dr. Malone, thank you very much. You're welcome.